Okay, so this is what I'm working with today. So I've got clean water, I've got a rag, I have uh, watercolor paper. So this is Arches Cold Press 140 pound paper. Uh, it's 100% cotton, so it soaks up water really nice. Uh, I haven't tried it on hot press paper yet. This technique that I'm gonna show you today is probably gonna work better on hot press, but haven't tried it yet, so we'll see. And then also have my palette, my messy, messy palette. Uh, there's method to the madness, so I'll explain that in a second. And then finally, the brush I'm using today is a size 10 silver black velvet brush. You can use other kinds of brushes too with this. Uh, I like that this one comes to a nice point and the way that this uh, holds water and releases water is really nice. Um, but like I said, you can use other kinds of brushes. You just might get different kinds of effects. So just play around with it and um, use the tools that you already have. So coming back to my palette and the paints that I'm using, I'm using mostly M. Graham paints. And uh, the way that I have it arranged is kind of like a color wheel. <laughs> I know there's lots of other messy things in between, but I have over here reds, then I have oranges, yellows, greens, blues, different kinds of blues. Um, this one's a dark blue, this is an indigo. And then here I have a black. This is a purple, it's kind of hard to see in the shadow. Uh, and then again, two reds. And down here in the center, I have some browns. I won't be using a lot of those for today. Um, but I'll be pulling from most of these different colors. And the technique that I'm going to be showing you is called double loading. So double loading your brush. And basically what it means is what it sounds like, where you add more than one color onto the brush at the same time. So what I found, at least through, you know, face painting in my uh, pre-COVID life <laughs> was that it works better if you have the lighter colors towards the base of the brush and the darker colors towards the tip. And that, and the reason why that is, is because uh, you're gonna have some uh, pulling and blending here. And as you're loading your brush, if you have the lighter colors on the tip, they're gonna get mixed in and um, kind of muddy from the darker ones towards the back. So it's, you can do it, but it's gonna be easier to um, have the darker colors towards the tip. So uh, it's probably gonna be easier for me to show you rather than talk to you <laughs> about double loading. So I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna get my brush wet. And for this first one, let's just go with uh, blues. Blue's my favorite color. So you'll see a lot of blues in the things that I paint. And uh, I'm gonna pull up a lighter blue towards the back. And I, I wanna focus more of the paint towards the base of the brush. And then I'm gonna wipe off just a little bit. Just needs a little bit more water. Then I'm gonna go with a darker blue. This is a phthalo blue. Then I have some indigo over here. And as I am adding more colors, uh, for the first one I went pretty far back. As you add colors, try and stay towards the, the tip um, so you don't go as far back as you did with the last color. Okay, and then a little bit of black. Okay, and then on my paper, I'm just gonna lay it down flat and drag it just a little bit. So you can see the nice colors that are blending here. I need a little bit more of the darker. So you might notice that uh, there's long pauses <laughs> because my, my brain has a really hard time talking and thinking and painting at the same time. So if there's long pauses, that's why it's because my brain doesn't multitask super well. Okay, so that is with one color and with one color you can add more colors if you want, but for the other ones I would stick to maybe three colors max, maybe a fourth if it's just like a little bit of black at the end. Um, and that'll make it so you don't have like a full rainbow on your brush, which will, it is a little bit harder to get a nice uh, blend from that. So let's do another one. Um, let me go with a, let's do a green and yellow one. So again, the lighter color towards the back. Okay. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna wipe off the tip. Okay, then I'm gonna grab some green. Let's do this kind of green. Okay, and a little bit darker. I'm gonna add uh, a little bit of blue to make the color, to make the green, to get a, a darker kind of green. And then just a touch of that lamp black. Okay, and I'm going to pull around the corner here. Okay, so the other, uh, so you can call it technique, um, that I used for uh, this painting, this kind of painting, is uh, just leaving white spaces in between. So um, at the end, I'll come back and fill in any spaces that you know are, are a little bit too wide uh, or missing some paint. But while you're painting, uh, you try and stay about the same width apart from the other color that you've already laid down. And that creates this nice kind of mosaic around the colors that you have. You can see a little bit better in this one too. Okay. So now let's go for, let's see. How about an orange, orangey yellow mix? Okay, so I'm gonna pull up yellow. Wipe off the tip. I'm gonna grab orange. Okay, then I'm gonna go for my red. And you can kind of see this one, how there's a lot more of that yellow at the base um, because it's the lightest color. Uh, sometimes it can get subsumed in the other one. So having a little bit more of that lighter color in back can help keep it uh, less mixed in with the other colors. So then you can see just the little bit of orange and then at the tip red and just a slight bit of that black. Okay, and let's go for this side. Need a little bit more of that red. Uh, so like I said, most of the time you want to do color combinations that are uh, next to each other on the color palette. One of the fun color combinations you can do is with uh, dioxazine purple and a uh, phthalo green. And the way it mixes makes it this kind of cool like eucalyptus color. Uh, you can see it on this one. See it here and on this side too. It's kind of a nice color. There, so I'm gonna do the green towards the back since that is the lighter color of the two. Okay, then I'm gonna go with that purple. And just a touch of the black.
Okay, and I'm actually gonna add some of that same green and purple combination on the other side. Just a touch on this side. And uh, you can see it's not perfect. It ran into that one, but that's okay. Life isn't perfect. Uh, if you take a close look at this one, there are lots of places where I ran into other colors and uh, you can see like right there. And when you're looking at it from far away, you tend to not notice those little ones. So it's okay if it's not perfect. Art isn't perfect. and Life isn't perfect and it's, that's okay. All right. And for this last one, I'm gonna do a, let's do a red and purple combo. And a red and watercolor can turn a little bit pinkish. So it'll be more like pink and purple. I'm gonna add this red. I actually think this one is a, Daniel Smith watercolor. Okay, dry that off. Add the purple and a little bit of black. And I'm just looking for different spots that may need a little bit of color balancing. And it's uh, kind of heavy up here. So I'm actually going to bring this color down here. I think this is dry. So since this is kind of light, I'll be able to get away with a little bit of color mixing here. Okay. And I'll be just about it, I think. spend all day doing the the little ones <laughs> okay so this is uh how it turns out hope you enjoyed this little tutorial on double loading your brush and leaving little white spaces in your paintings and if there's other kinds of videos that you want to see or uh, would enjoy watching let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe